You never know what's happening behind closed doors. For some, it can be a dangerous place to be under the same roof as an abuser. With our colleagues at Omni News, we're launching a new series behind closed doors, looking at the epidemic of family violence. And we begin tonight with a mother's quest to protect herself and her son from her husband, sharing her story for the first time to help others going through the same. We've concealed the identities of the victims in our stories. A warning first, the details of her story may be disturbing for some. He would slap me or pick up something and throw it at me over minor things. The last time it happened, I was so badly injured that I had to go to the doctor. Anita followed the man she loved to Canada. What started out as emotional abuse quickly turned to physical violence. It felt like my mouth was filling up with water, so I just spit it out right there. I didn't think it would be blood in my mouth, so when I looked at the floor, there was a lot of blood that I'd spit out. I went to the mirror to see what had happened to me. She was looking for a way out, but Anita was a newcomer without legal status and had little support. Even friends and family told her to stay. Your son will be ruined. There's nothing here in this country. He's from Canada. Just be patient, be careful, do what your husband says. Compromise. On one of the many occasions her husband attacks her, she decides to turn to police. I asked the officer on the phone, what if I don't want to file a complaint and hang up? What happens then? The officer said to me, if you don't take action for yourself today, if you don't take a stand, maybe next time we'll come to collect your body from the house. You're doing the right thing speaking up for yourself, getting justice for yourself. Think about your son. Experts say the majority of women don't report their abusers and rarely find somewhere to turn. Nisa Holmes never turns anyone away. The national organization prides itself on providing supports to newcomers and Muslims in particular, providing culturally sensitive services beyond language barriers. So their shared experience of Islamophobia, feeling intimidated, uh, garbage being thrown at them, people being on their prayer mat. So these are traumatic, traumatic experiences for these women who are escaping one abusive situation and they are landing into another abusive situation. Uh, unfortunately. In the last five years, their client intake has increased tenfold, and across the country, they see how the system fails women fleeing violence, lack of child care, hindering their ability to work, and little to no financial aid. Ontario works. It is so low. Clients are staying longer at transitional homes due to the lack of subsidized housing, years on wait lists and unaffordable options, and that puts women at risk. They ask us the first is, how are you going to help me with housing? How are you going to help me with rent? How are you going to help me with employment? And when they see the reality check of what it looks like, sometimes they think, oh, is, I think I'm better where I am. During COVID, Nisa Holmes also notes that some immigrants may not be eligible for pandemic supports. Anita still lives at home with her abuser. He started talking to some close common friends saying, I'll force her to prostitute herself because I'll stop giving her money to spend. I'll force her to beg for scraps from door to door. He threatened this because I didn't have immigration papers. And ahead on City News, what made Anita speak out and the unlikely frontline workers who are trained to intervene at signs of family violence. If you are in immediate danger, call 911. If you are experiencing violence at home and concerned about your immigration status, call any of the numbers on your screen when it's safe or visit us at citynews.ca for a full list of resources. You never know what's happening behind closed doors. For some women, home can be a dangerous place. That's certainly Anita's story, a mom, protector, and victim of domestic violence who is still today looking for a way out, finding support in an unexpected place. A warning first, the details may be disturbing to some. I worry this will impact my son. He watches me, he follows me. At home, I'm his only friend. We're not revealing her true identity, but she wants to share her story to help others. It's a harrowing one. On some days, she's taunted, her face bloodied. On others, she wonders if she'll survive another night. Life normal. 
Once a newcomer to Canada, she has no financial security and nowhere to turn. Family and friends told her to stay in the marriage, even if it meant she'd suffer physical and mental violence. And her five-year-old son would watch as his father began striking his mother. He started to hit me and swear at me. So my son came running to see what was happening. He was really scared and started crying loudly. He went and hid in a corner of the house. He was afraid and hiding, unable to speak. It became the new norm for the child who could no longer be protected. Then one day, his silence broke. His teacher asked me, is something going on at home? Is everything okay? I asked her why she was asking, and she said he's told everyone in class a few times that my father does this to my mom, my mother cries, her face is injured. Schools can be safe havens for kids who see and experience violence at home. And educators are critical frontline staff who are trained to pick up on the warning signs. Based on the behavior of the child, actions of the child, is the physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, there are different and also neglect too. A teacher of over two decades who has been in this situation says school staff receive annual training not to investigate, but to know when it's time to call on authorities to intervene, including Children's Aid Society. Everyone's duty to report if they see the child is or has been abused. Which poses a risk at a time where virtual learning has become the norm. It's a big challenge. Maybe there's more child abuse out there, but we don't have direct contact. If there is a physical, any bruises, anything, uh, we cannot notice that. For a mother who once felt alone protecting her son, a teacher's inquiry showed compassion, but also how domestic violence was shaping the most important person in her life. That was a shock to me that my son wasn't able to react at home but went to school and talked about it. In a way, it's good my kid can tell the difference between right and wrong. That he knew what was happening to me was wrong, and he went and told the right person about it. So a few days ago, when my husband suddenly raised his voice at me, my son interrupted to say, Daddy, please don't shout at my mom. This week, we're launching our new series, Behind Closed Doors, around the epidemic of family violence, alongside our colleagues, Omni News. The stories are disturbing, but vital to share for those who face the unthinkable day in and out. For full coverage and resources, go to our website, citynews.ca. If you are in immediate danger, call 911. If you are experiencing violence at home and concerned about your immigration status, call any of the numbers on your screen when it's safe or visit us at citynews.ca for a full list of resources.